This commercial sex ring was built on secrecy and exclusivity. Kids in crisis, sold for sex and forgotten. Sex, work, kids work! Sex, specifically sex worker, is defined as a person whose work involves sex acts, especially a person who engages in sexual intercourse in exchange for pay. Can you tell me how to get to Beverly Hills? Sure, for five bucks. At least, that's how Merriam-Webster defines it. Fairly straightforward, but in the United States, the term, according to experts we spoke with, is anything but. How do you define sex work, a sex worker? Well, first, we don't use the term sex work. We don't believe that prostitution is either sex nor work. So sex work is a broad umbrella term that includes many different forms of erotic labor. So prostitution, of course, is the one that is most discussed and is criminalized, but it also includes legal forms of erotic labor, dancing, camming, whether people want to identify as a sex worker or identify as a survivor or a victim, that to me is something that's only that person can define for themselves. It's controversial to say the least. In fact, buying sex and selling sex has been illegal in all 50 states with some exceptions in Nevada until now. In October, the state of Maine enacted the first law in the country to partially decriminalize sex work, meaning selling sex is no longer a crime. Buying sex is, but it turns out decriminalizing sex work may not mean what you think it does. So Maine is where we start this story. Welcome to the studio. <laughs> oh my God, the light in here is amazing. I've called it my art, massage, and movement studio. At 27 years old, Juliet has lofty goals for this small room. I want it to be a place where everyone can come together and also take care of our mental health and we can practice sales scenarios yeah. in an environment where we're not pressured to be making money on, on the spot. Juliet is a pseudonym she uses as an exotic dancer and escort. She requested we use that name for this story. She's been a sex worker since her 23rd birthday. This year, Juliet opened a studio, hoping to offer training for sex workers and services for clients. A lot of people find me on TikTok and will go follow my different channels, stuff like that, and often reach out on Instagram. So, like I have this person here, when are you free this week? Any chance I come to you now and spend four to 5,000? The motivation behind Maine's new law is to protect women. It's based on the principle that there is no such thing as voluntary sex work. That's something Juliet disagrees with. I'm living, breathing proof that it can be consensual. Human beings are social creatures. We need connection. We need intimacy. Prostitution is the oldest profession for a reason. The law is called an act to reduce commercial sexual exploitation. It is not a step towards legalizing sex work, far from it. It's actually designed to protect women by eradicating the sex trade altogether. Opponents to partial decriminalization, like Juliet, say the new law will actually put sex workers at even greater risk by placing a larger burden on the buyers. If a client is concerned about prosecution, they are more likely to lie about their identity. They are more likely to lie about their STD health. They are more likely to scam a provider, not pay them. They are more likely to seek out dangerous locations. They might even be shameful of themselves and therefore treat their provider with violence. I've missed you at the club lately. Oh, I missed you too so much. I'm so excited yeah. to come back. Al is a sex buyer in Maine and one of Juliet's clients. He requested we use a pseudonym to maintain his privacy. Al says this law won't make any difference for him. The Johns are still going to get criminalized. I am not going to change my behavior because I vet really well. And uh, I don't think I have anything to worry about. Do you want the laws to change? So as far as the laws change, it doesn't affect me either way. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. Al says there is no way partial decriminalization will succeed in eradicating sex work. There will never be a world where you can end the demand for sex work. There's always going to be a need for sex work in, in the world. Partial decriminalization has many names and is adopted in countries like France, Israel and Canada. 
it keeps the punishment on the clients, mostly men, as a deterrent from buying sex. And it removes the criminal charges against sex workers, mostly women, that may prevent them from starting new lives outside the sex trade. Partial decriminalization is lauded by most advocates for human trafficking survivors, like Tyna Benemy, who sees the sex trade as a form of gender-based violence. She says partial decriminalization works because the buyers don't need protection, the women do. No one has a fundamental right to sex, right? So I don't know why the state would legitimize an entire commercial sex industry. Unlike Juliet, Tyna, the executive director of the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women, does not believe sex can be work and says all sex workers are victims or survivors. You're assuming that there is equality between the two contracting parties. So you have one party that has the money, the power, and the sexual desire, and you have the other party that has none of it. Here's what the data says about partial decriminalization. The Swedish government claims street prostitution decreased by 50% in the 10 years following implementation, but multiple academic studies reject that claim, saying there is no reliable data demonstrating any overall decline in people selling sex with partial decriminalization. Basically, there may be fewer sex workers on the street, but that doesn't mean there's fewer sex workers. If there is no safe outlet for people to receive these services, they're going to find unsafe ways. Melanie is a lifelong New Yorker. She often walks to the small park in Queens to write. How does this park make you feel? How does being here make you feel? It's freeing, you know? I do believe as a black woman in society, you're never truly free, but I do feel like I can breathe. I like being around the water, it's calming. But it's also nice to know that I can walk through this park and not have to sit on a sex buyer's lap or do something for my traffickers. Melanie's encounter with the sex trade began at a young age. So I was kidnapped when I was 12. In middle school, she says she and her friends ran into some boys and found trouble. They were feeding us a lot of really cheap alcohol. And I ended up blacking out. When I woke up, I was being raped by one of those two boys. When I tried to run out the house, that boy came back with an older man who told me that I wasn't going anywhere. And from there, I just have been in the system of the sex trade the whole time. Melanie says she came from a dysfunctional family. And at the age of 13, she was taken into court-ordered police custody, which led to time in the juvenile justice and foster care systems. She says that she re-entered the sex trade at the age of 15. In the United States, about 40% of sex trafficking victims and survivors are black women, the highest percentage of any race, according to the nonprofit National Black Women's Justice Unit as of January 2022. What do you think people get wrong about the sex trade? I think what people don't understand about the sex trade is that it's a lot more nuanced than what we think. Melanie supports partial decriminalization because she believes the majority of women who get involved in the sex trade do not do it by choice, but for different reasons. What do you believe those are? There's a list of things that make you susceptible to trafficking and prostitution. And some of those include um, your undocumented status, if you're a woman or a girl, if you're black, if you're, in, if you're part of the indigenous population, if you're LGBTQ plus identifying, um, if you have a substance abuse disorder, if, you've been, if you have any prior sexual abuse history. Now at 27, Melanie works with Tyna to combat human trafficking. She believes punishing the buyers will end the demand for sex workers, which will then end trafficking and exploitation. The reason that I love this model is not only because it decriminalizes me and recognizes that I should not be criminalized for my exploitation, but it's also the only model that's comprehensive and has aftercare services. If we can add resources that I didn't have that made me susceptible to trafficking, then maybe I wouldn't go back. But there's another side to this. Several human rights groups have vocalized support of full decriminalization. They say if governments remove criminal charges for both sellers and buyers, it would lead to safer interactions, especially for trans sex workers and sex workers of color who face the highest rates of violence and infections. Can you describe for us what full decriminalization looks like practically? From a pragmatic standpoint, full decriminalization will look like individual workers being able to manage their own businesses. Melissa Suntag Bruto supports full decriminalization. She's the legal director of Decriminalize Sex Work, a group pushing a full decriminalization bill in New York. An individual going online, 
vetting the client, right, ensuring their safety, uh, ensuring that they feel comfortable with the negotiation, and being able to see that client in a place of their choosing, right, not a place that they had to choose out of fear or criminalization. Many critics of full decriminalization, some of whom we've spoken with, say decriminalizing the role of the buyer or the Johns, depending on who you ask, essentially absolves them of any responsibility. What I am looking at is what is going to augment people's health and safety, and overwhelmingly that is decriminalization. Today, as attitudes in the United States towards sex work remain hotly debated, there are a number of states considering similar partial decriminalization laws to Maine's. As for Juliet, she says what she offers provides both buyer and seller a safe place to engage consensually. I have had an overwhelmingly positive experience in, in sex work. That's not the case for everyone. The benefit perhaps is that a conversation is happening at all. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.